Now, I'm not going to lie. I don't know nothing about Kamal Williams. I've never listened to a Kamal Williams song in my entire life. I've seen his name, you know, all over the place on places that I kind of check out. Mix Mag, DJ Mag, RA, on Juno, whatever, right? He's, you know, he's, he's a well-known art artist in that regard. But I, I can't lie. I've never flipping listened to a tune of his in my entire life. The same way that I haven't listened to a Kamasi Washington tune, right? You see him everywhere, all over the place. But I never for once played anything from his, um, you know, discography. So I'm not really going to miss out on anything based on this particular headline, but it is pretty wild. And RA put together a feature. This isn't just just like a normal news article this is a feature a full-length feature on ra regarding kamal williams accused alleged sexual assault by free william which is free William, which is pretty wild right to think of an electronic you know a jazz artist basically um is now being um, accused of being a diddler so it seems like in electronic music and dance music anything nightlife adjacent if you're a woman you're not safe in it you're really not safe because these guys no matter what genre they're in even if the most like you know the most micro of the, of the micro is celebrity, not that well known, uh, maybe very well known in that kind of hyper localized sort of community. Even these type of people have the propensity to maybe do some wild shit according to this article. So let's read it and see what these people are saying here regarding the one and only Kamal Williams. So London born producer and multi instrumentalist Kamal Williams is often celebrated for his role helping shape South London's contemporary experimental jazz scene. Born Henry G. Williams, he broke through um, the mid uh, to tens with releasing labels such as MCDE, Rhythm Section, and Eagle Records. He formed the duo Yusuf Kamal, whose only album, the critically acclaimed Black Focus, landed on the Brownswood Recordings in 2016. The duo disbanded shortly after, and Williams com continued as a solo artist, releasing a string of funk driven singles, EPs, as as well as a DJ Kicks mix in 2019. Free women disclosed to resident advisor that they were allegedly sexually assaulted by Williams. The Williams allege the women alleged the incidents took place in 2010, 2021, and as recently as 2023. Oh, he's cooked. <laughs> Maybe you, you could say the 202010 one. Okay, that was back in the day when I was young and I was going crazy in the fame. But you were diddling back in 2023. Yo. A representative of Williams has responded to the allegations saying very serious allegations are untrue and emphatically denied by him and he'll be able to demonstrate the same. Okay, cool. Let's see. So he's going he's, he's gonna to be fighting on his side of things, but let's see what these people are saying. And I guess they changed the names of the people to kind of protect the anonymity because it's got a little asterisk here. So the first account here of Kamal Williams' alleged nonsense behavior, Kylie, November 2010. Um, it says, Kylie was set. Oh, no. It already starts off with a bomb. Kylie was 17. Yo. Oh, this guy's cooked. Who still was known as Henry Wu. So, Kylie was 17 when she first met Williams, who still was known as Henry Wu at the time. He was a good friend of her then-boyfriend, Ted. Williams, oh, Jesus Christ, bro. It gets worse and worse. This is what? An ex-girlfriend of a former best friend. So, Williams added Kylie on Facebook and started messaging her. I found it weird, but also was like, ah, he's just being friendly. <sighs> Kylie told Ted, who also brushed it off. Sometimes later, when Kylie and Ted were on a break, she went on to a house party and ran into Williams. It was the first, maybe second time I'd ever actually met him, according to Kylie Williams, was trying to dance with her and made passes to kiss her numerous times. Kylie declined. The next day, Kylie found a scarf in her bag and didn't belong to her. She posted a photo of her on Facebook asking, who put this scarf in my bag last night? It's still here. Williams commented saying it was his and sent her a DM. At the time, oh my God. Oh my God. This nigga planted the scarf in her bag. <sighs> Fucking hell. Devious behavior. What? <laughs> like, is this, what do you think this is? Do you think this is like a mistake? Mucking around, fucking around with a bag. You just saw it on the floor. You put like, or is this like a legitimate thing? You know what girls would do back in the day where you'd purposely leave a little earring under the, the, the couch so that the guy wouldn't fucking ghost your one night stand you. Um, the next day she found a scarf. Williams commented saying it was his instead of DM. At the time, he was using one of his Facebook burner accounts. Honestly, man, women are just like, sometimes women have really good intuition, but they never listen to it. This was screaming weird to her from the moment he messaged her the first time. That first paragraph, she already sensed this guy was on some nonsense. She should have immediately blocked. Do you know what I mean? Women have good intuition, but sometimes they don't act on it. I don't think men have any, right? We just fucking go by the seat of our pants or we get led by our fucking penises. But she had good intuition. She felt at the beginning, this guy is not on good terms. He's not on good... Man, I don't like this person. <sighs> anyway, whatever. 
Uh, let's continue. Um, he was using one of his Facebook burner accounts. Kylie suggested that they meet somewhere, but he invited her to his place to drop off instead. William said his little brother was at home and that he couldn't leave him by himself or bring him along to meet her. Kylie agreed to go to William's house the following day. <sighs> I don't know. Come on, girls. Well, you tried to lip you at the party the other day. Your friend of your ex girlfriend of that. Like, come on, girl. What are you doing, man? Going to his house. What are you doing? As soon as she got through the door, Kyle said Williams attempted to kiss her. At first, she refused, then relented and kissed him back. And then really quickly, we hadn't even left the hallway. He turned me around, pushed me against the wall to a coat racks, held his arm on my back and tried to pull my leggings down. I pushed him away and said, no, I'm not having sex with you. It's just that we go up to his room. I was like, no, I'm not having sex with you. It's just that we go and sit on the sofa. Honestly, man, I know you're only 17, but come on, bro. Kylie said Williams offered to make her a cup of tea. <sighs> Ah! which she says she diffused the situation and made her feel more at ease about staying she recalls that she went into the kitchen for a moment and when he came back he sat next to her on the sofa and attempted to kiss her again honestly you should have maybe you know what you do on those type of occasions because sometimes women are afraid you know men obviously are stronger and stuff in terms of kind of overpowering you maybe getting physical maybe that time when they go and make tea you also make an excuse to go to the toilet and you just leave he's not going to chase you down the street and look like a psycho most of the time you all right you're probably better off doing that oh you're going okay cool um can i use your toilet yeah cool and just quickly leave because it won't be weird for you to carry your bag either because women always carry their bag with them take your bag with you and just leave he then lifted my legs up over my head what he then lifted my legs up over my head held his arm on them and pulled my leggings down this all happened so quickly it probably lasted the best part of four minutes and then he was done so what she got raped she's saying she's saying she got raped i was nervous about fighting back in any any physical way because I was nervous about him getting aggressive. He was very manipulative and pushy. I kept telling him to stop, but he still did it. Then he got up and left the room. I was just like, did that just happen? Oh my fucking God. Holy shit. She's basically saying he raped her, isn't it? Yo. <laughs> Yo. This guy was doing this at 17 years of age. Could you imagine what he must have done before this? Because, you know, there's no such a thing as like first time you know first and only offenders when it comes to sexual assault it doesn't exist in my personal opinion once a rapist always a rapist once a diddler always a diddler it doesn't ex doesn't exist oh you just did that one time yeah all right cool go bury yourself under a fucking jail oh my god okay um i kept telling him to stop but he still did it then he got up and left the room i was like did that just happen i pulled my leggings up and sat there for a minute he came back in and asked if I'd seen his keys. He found them and then said he needed to go and pick up his brother from school. So his brother wasn't even in the house. So that whole thing was a lie. Carl said they walked in silence to the bus stop where William dropped her off. Once on the bus, she began crying and called her girlfriend to tell her what happened. She was like, so he raped you? I was like, well, I don't think so. And she was like, well, that's what it was. I was like, well, I don't really want to call it that. You don't want to admit it to yourself. I guess this is one of the hard things about women when I guess this is one of the difficult things for women when it comes to reporting sexual assaults and rapes and stuff and probably why the conviction rates are so low because the experience is so traumatic it probably fries your brain and you don't remember it correctly and because most of the and because there's this thing that people say I bet you some women have this thing which is really sad right I bet you some women have this like thing in the back of their mind where they're like don't ever put yourself in a situation where you might get thing majiggy but it's not always like that sometimes somebody can be very manipulative like this guy was where he's literally planning it out from the house party that they were at before putting the fucking scarf in the fucking bag you don't you shouldn't feel like you put yourself in that position because in a normal interaction if that's a friend of a if that's a friend of an ex-boyfriend that's a fairly normal thing hey your scarf was in my bag because he knows you you're his friend you're kind of his friend by default of being a girlfriend of his um friend then obviously him putting his scarf in your bag isn't a bad thing that's particularly fine and him going to pick it up at, or you or you going to get, drop it off to him on your way to go somewhere else is not a bad thing either or maybe you're going to have a drink as you drop like there's nothing wrong with that at all zero on the surface of it but i guess because a woman puts herself in that position sometimes when you remember what happened you can maybe start to blame yourself you start to victim blame yourself in terms of what happened which is kind of hard for you then to piece together what happened and kind of be able to put a police report together and maybe some days have gone by since those incidents happened or maybe you just don't want to accept that it's happened to you because you don't want to seem weak or that you got taken advantage of so uh, when guys are out here saying oh where's the police report no one got convicted it's like bruh it's very complex a situation and it's actually quite 
you're you're overly simplifying a very traumatic, a very intense, a very mentally debilitating thing that can really fuck with your brain. So, which is why people don't go. And, and I'd imagine too, they probably this is probably another thing as well. I never have before. I'd imagine too, there's probably some women out there that know what a rape conviction could do to somebody. They know what rape allegations can do to a guy's life. And they just are really hesitant and very wary and very hesitant to throw it out there. Which again is wild because you should maybe you should be thinking about them. Think about yourself, right? You're the one that got fucking assaulted. You don't want to got disrespected, right? You don't want to got fucking abused. You don't want to got fucking taken advantage of. You should be thinking about only yourself. But some I bet you some women have the fucking grace, have the I don't know what that is to like think of the guy and think, oh, you know what, I don't want to put this on his jacket because maybe it was me as well. Maybe I egged him on. It's like, no, 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 no. This guy's been a monster since he was 17. 17 years old. These are free accounts, by the way, right? Allegedly, free accounts that have come on the record and they've changed their names. Think of the people that didn't want to come on the record or change their names. Fuck, man. This is fucking horrible. Jesus Christ. 17 years old. <sighs> Um. So, at the time, I never reported the alleged rape or publicized it in any real way. But I did always make a point to tell people about it. Um, when William's name came up among friends, she would tell them about her encounter with him. I guess it was my own way of warning people about what he was like. She was reluctant to use the word rape. I was 17. I think I didn't quite understand what that was. But she, but she said that there was no mixed signals at William's house party that day. The whole time during it, before it, I was saying, I'm not going to have sex with you. I don't want to have sex with you. I don't want to do this repeatedly. Yo, anytime you hear these sort of things, you have to back off as a dude. You just back off. Especially in IRL. Back the fuck away. What the fuck are you doing? <sighs> a few weeks later, William sent Kylie a message on Facebook saying hi, but she never responded. In 2020, imagine imagine raping somebody and still having the the fucking teremity to... I don't know. In 2020, Kylie decided to report Williams to the police. The police said, asked if Kylie wanted to take Williams to court. She said no. At the time, she was caring for a young baby and didn't want to add stress to her family. But it was important for her that the police have a report and file. My main motivation for contacting the police was to have the offence reported in case it could be a system investigation. Kylie wrote to a witness statement. RA has reviewed a copy of the official statement given to the best friend police, as well as an email of the police confirming Kylie first reported the incident of rape in 2020 and later provided a video statement. So she went to the police about this. What did the police do then? Reported the alleged rape brought back all kinds of traumatic feelings. I never really processed it until now. It really gave me a panic attack where it gets brought up in social situations. I bury it. I don't think about it anymore. It's taken me a long time to confront these, to confront it myself. I already spoken to Clara, the friend of Kylie, during the bus journey on the way home. She confirmed Kylie's account. So there's there's a there's a breadcrumb trail linking back to this friend that she called immediately after the alleged assault. Who confirmed, yeah, she spoke to me about that and I told her it was rape, but she didn't want to admit it, you know, because she wasn't ready to protest it just yet. So this shit happened. And there's obviously a police report from 2020. It's now 2024. Yo, this Kamal Williams, dude, sounds like a piece of shit. Um, Jenna, August 2021, London. Jenna recalls meeting Williams in August 2021 after he played a show at a launch party for a London radio station. She attended it with a journalist friend. I didn't know who he was. He later came over and made a weird comment about my ethnic heritage. It was offensive, so I said I can't talk to people like that. He was kind of apologetic, but I said I'm still not keen on speaking to you. My friends later told me that he was in the band and they'd be interested to talk. <sighs> Clout in it. Ah! All these women had the exact same reaction the first time they met him. It wasn't even like he came in and was super charismatic and really charming and whatever and duped him that way. This guy was a cunt from minute one so far it's two for it's two out of three this guy was a cunt from two, from the minute go they should have listened to their fucking gut should listen to the intuition and just ran a mile imagine walking up to somebody you don't know and making a joke about their fucking heritage like what who the fuck are you do i know you do you know what i mean god damn it they should have listened to an intuition fuck anyway my friends later told me that he was in a band jenna said williams told her he had autism oh yeah autism cool um, as though it was an excuse for communicating the way he did she said Williams then apologised and, and said a big group was planning to visit another bar in central London my friends had to go and ask if I was okay staying until this point I'd only really had a good experience making a few friends on nights out I was relatively new to London and a sociable person staying out with a new group of people wasn't something out of ordinary and shouldn't have been a problem so I was fine to stay and it was a mixed group 
At this stage, William's behavior wasn't raising alarm bells for Jenna. He wasn't being pushy or forceful, but he seemed to be trying to pursue me. I made it very clear that I wasn't interested and made a point of hanging out with other women in the group. Afterwards, she said that Williams took her number to let her know what the next bout. Oh, man. Come on, man. What are you, honestly? Oh. Why would you give this guy your number? You already, I don't know. I guess you're just going to be nice, isn't it? But I think a lot of it has, that's the thing, clout really gets you, lets you get away with fucking murder, bro. Or maybe looks, I don't know what it is, but clout lets you get away with murder because all these people had the same visceral reaction. This guy's a cunt. I don't care what fucking album he released, what EP is on, what record label is on. He seems like a fucking cunt. They all had the same reaction, but they still went ahead with it because I guess he's well known or something. I don't know. He then sent me a barrage of messages. I was giving him the benefit of the doubt as he flagged a couple of times that he was with autism. I send, I know that send people have different types of clouds communication. According to Jenna, she had no intention of staying out late as the next bar was a long way from her home. People in the group encouraged her to join them regardless, promising they'd be to send her a taxi. By the way, the people that were out with her as well, you're pieces of shit too. Because if she made it very clear that she wasn't comfortable with this dude, he already annoyed her in the beginning. Like, keep an eye out on your fucking friends, bro. If they have a fucking bad interaction with somebody, maybe step in. Do you know what I mean? Maybe the defenses are down. Maybe they don't want to upset the, the harmony of the group because they're the new one there. They don't know who this guy is. He might be well establishing a group. You know what I mean? Whatever. But look out for your friend, bro. Like, God damn. It was very exclusive bar. I would never have gone there otherwise, so I decided to, I might as well go. The night was still young, she said, and she spent most of the evening chatting with the other women in the group. But as the night went on, she claims that Williams became increasingly drunk and repeatedly blamed his behavior on autism. Anybody that tries to use those type of things to excuse their behavior, run a mile also. It's no excuse. Those type of things that you're doing, you're just doing them because that's who you actually are. It's kind of like people say how you act when you're drunk or high. It's usually just on the, you know, what do you think called an exaggerated version of yourself but it's still an element of yourself um let's continue about the night went on she came increasingly drunk he was talking about religion a lot very incoherent ramblings jenna said she found the bar boring and wanted to leave as it was getting late but williams convinced her to stay for one more drink i didn't see him putting anything in my oh my god oh my god no no i didn't see him put anything in my drink but i don't remember anything after that drink sitting down having a drink with him is the last thing i remember I've been spiked before and recognize the feeling of being spiked. So when I woke up at his place the next morning, not knowing how I got there, I rec- Oh my fucking God. <sighs> I don't know about you guys, but in my experience, in my very, very brief, very rudimentary, very elementary experience of pursuing women, especially in real life, even online, if they tell you they're not interested, very rarely, very rarely, Let's say 90% of the times, there's no way of turning that around. Sometimes, 10% of the times, you might, you might bump into them on a particular night where they're feeling a bit frisky. Maybe they broke up with that person and they bumped into you on that particular day. Cool. You're lucky. The stars have aligned for you. Allah, Zeus, Jesus, God is shining on you. Run amok. Have your fun. And usually it doesn't last any longer than that because they just want to get out of the system, right? They're really interested anyway. And you still get ghosted. But very rarely do you go out with somebody in a night out and you start off by making an off a joke, a f an overly familiar joke that they don't like because they're not your friend. And then you try and pursue them and they tell you they're not interested. And then they agree to go back to your house. It doesn't happen that way. Maybe at the most, at the most, you might get a little cheeky bum rub, a little kiss on the dance floor while you're in a club. But they're not going to go from like, nah, 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 back to your place. It doesn't work out that way. Usually there's like, nah, 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 okay, then nah, 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 okay. That maybe is an example. But if somebody end, if, if this ends up this way, something amiss has gone on. Something any something dodgy has gone on. If it goes from like, nose all the way, and then you suddenly wake up to like, no, no. Something definitely happened there. Something very bad happened. Yo, she got spiked. Jenna said that she woke up feeling disoriented in a place she didn't know. Williams was asleep in the bed next to her. I was like, this isn't right. This is really weird. She said, an, she said an Uber had been ordered on her account and then cancelled. I was still trying to piece together what had happened, but just couldn't. I felt out of it, like an out-of-body experience. I woke up dressed and couldn't remember anything happening, so I tried not to think about it too much. So what's she alleging? She alleging that he tried. she tried to order an Uber, and I guess in the midst of her being fucked up, he must have cancelled it or it got cancelled. So it's proof that she was trying to get home. But, oh no! Fucking hell. I then tried to wake him up before leaving to ask why I was there. But he was so completely out of the count, I chose just to leave. 
Jenna said she went home around 8 a.m. and received a torrent of messages and phone calls from Williams. He told her that she had agreed to have breakfast with him the following morning before going to pick up his car. She said she didn't remember any of this and wanted to get clarity about what happened the previous night. She agreed to meet him a few hours later at a full st in London. Jesus Christ, bro. People are just too trusting, man. People are just too trusting. Too trusting. Too, too trusting. Why are you meeting this person, bro? Run a mile. He then said he needed to get something from his car. As we were walking towards it, I told him I hadn't wanted to go back to his place with him. But he was like, we did have sex. I was like, what? That was a really weird thing to say. I don't remember. <sighs> I don't remember that happening and said, I told you I didn't want to do that. She recalls him replying, oh, well, I'm autistic. I seem to be shell shaken. I uh, sorry, I seem to be shell shocked. So to speak, I stopped walking, which is when he grabbed me. She explained that Williams then insisted on dropping her off at home. He linked my arm quite forcibly. Really scared and unsafe, I panicked and wasn't able to function normally. It was when I it was it's what I've since discussed in therapy as fight or flight fight, flight or freeze response. My response was being was was being freeze in this situation. So he assaulted her a second time. Is that what you're trying to say? Jenna said she felt overwhelmingly scared and ashamed. I felt, I guess I felt ashamed and embarrassed that I couldn't leave at that moment, that I couldn't get away to keep myself safe. Jenna said Williams forcibly insisted that she get into his car. She said she didn't want to get into Williams' vehicle, but between him moving up the street and being shocked into the information she just received, I felt really unsafe how to get out of the situation. She said she didn't want Williams to know where she lived, so she asked him to drop her off near a station. Instead, he drove to the opposite direction of the suburban outskirts of southwest London. I did I had not lived in London long and had no idea where I was or where I was going. It just seemed so dodgy. Will J Jenna said she kept trying to think of ways to leave the vehicle, but I had no clue where she was and felt trapped and were generally scared of this man. In the car, she said William seemed paranoid and rambled incoherently about religion and celebrities hiding their sexuality. It just seemed like he was completely unhinged. I was getting increasingly worried about my safety. His driving was erratic. Jenna said she asked him to drop her, drop her off somewhere and she had to meet a friend, but he just ignored me and just kept getting more angry. Honestly, I was just trying to be nice to him for fear of him crashing and killing me. Jenna said Williams then pulled out outside of a shop and locked her in the car. I don't know why I didn't try to call anyone at this point. I felt dazed and in shock. She said Williams returned to the car shortly after with several boxes of nitrous oxide, laughing gas. He suggested we go to his flat and do some NOS, but I said I had to leave. I can't remember exactly what he said, but the vibe felt very much like I didn't have to say them in the matter. Jenna reluctantly went back to Williams' flat. I kept thinking now, why didn't I just run? I guess he had painted this picture of himself as a sketchy, violent, dangerous character. I was scared he would just chase me and physically attack me. Ah, okay, I see. He he weird. He freaked her out so much that she legitimately was frozen in fear, and she didn't want to freak him out into doing something very drastic and very fatal. So she just played along. But then playing along probably led to more abuse. Fucking hell, man. <laughs> Oh, this is so fucking heartbreaking. She said Williams insisted that she inhale the balloon containing nitrous oxide. He came in he came onto me while I was feeling the effects of the balloon. I said no and he tried to push me him off. Jenna said that she was feeling very really out of it from the night before, therefore didn't have much strength and was usually and, and as usual to push him away. He turned me around and forced me over the sofa. I kept struggling. I was still tripping out from the balloon. Um he he was a lot stronger than me. He said that I didn't want him to carry on, but he did. I couldn't get him to stop. I said, I said, sorry, I had said that I didn't want him to carry on, but he did. I couldn't get him off. I couldn't get him to stop. When he finished, he almost instantly pretended to fall asleep on the lounge. I got out there as quickly as I could. Jenna said she immediately blocked Williams' phone number, but then she went to block him on Instagram. She realized he'd already blocked her straight after he, she fled his place. I know he must have known what he did was wrong and fucked up. Otherwise, why behave like this? Looking back, it all seems predatory and premeditated. It makes me sick to my stomach. Jenna considered reporting her ordeal to the police, but said she wasn't confident enough to do so at the time. Friends have had really bad experience with the police where they get blamed for an attack. I'd gone for a drink with a group of people I didn't know, so I thought the police would say it was my fault. I didn't have the capacity to deal with it as a woman of color. I also know the experience of police might not be the most favorable either. 
Ira has spoken to a friend of Jenna who was leaving with her at the time and um, alleged incidents. A friend confirmed that she had spoken to Jenna the morning after she was allegedly stayed at Williams's place and again the second alleged meeting with Williams at London Bridge. I don't know, man. I don't know. If, if you're on an event and you're on a festival and you're putting this guy still on your lineup, like, ooh, you really don't give a fuck, bro. If you're going to read these accounts and be okay to put him on your lineup for club nights and festivals and shit, you really don't give a fuck. And probably people, if if you see this guy on lineups and shit at parties, you should probably write off the, the party completely and probably look at the promoter another way. Because if I heard about this in the scene and I was putting on a party, I wouldn't book this guy. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I'm a nobody. So if you're putting people on and this is getting spread on one of the biggest fucking dance music platforms out there and you're not giving a fuck, you have some wild skeletons in your closet because these accounts are horrendous. And these aren't even like, you know, sometimes you have these accounts of nightlife interactions or flirtations and sex stuff. And it's kind of hard to really figure out what happened. The lines are blurred, right? Everyone's drunk. Everyone's like, but a lot of this stuff sounds premeditated, bro. A lot of this stuff didn't even happen at a club night. Happened like at gatherings with friends and shit. Where you're meant to be safe. You're meant to be around people that you know, you know, chilled environment. Like, and this is like, wow. Can you imagine what happened in nightclubs then? What happened, or what people haven't reported about? Anyway, last one. Sarah, August 2023, Parisian Gulf region. Sarah, or Sarah, I think, I think let's call Sarah. Sarah recounts first meeting Williams in her native country in August 2023. The meeting for him for the second time in London. When I got to London, I made an Instagram post. He saw it and wanted to meet. Sarah invited Williams to meet her at a bar with friends, but according to Sarah, he said he insisted on turning up in his car. She asked him to join her at the bar, but Williams told her he doesn't drink and would prefer to jam at his studio. <laughs> Oh, I'm really laughing because this is like textbook creepo behavior, in it. Instead of meeting somewhere public just to hang out, have a bar, let's go to a private, secluded studio somewhere. <sighs> excited by this, excited because of course he's a musician, isn't it? I guess. <sighs> excited by this prospect, Sarah agreed to meet to join him, but she noticed the vibes were off right away. When they arrived at a studio, Williams revealed that he had been diagnosed with autism. Uh, the autism thing again. So if he acted strangely, that was why. So what? If you grab her boob, it's autism. If you try to finger bang her in the bar, it's autism. Yeah, this guy is a piece of shit, bro. Um, Sarah said Williams played a series of jazz improvisations before abruptly stopping the music and walking out the room. Sarah recalled feeling the urge to leave. He told me he didn't think he'd ever feel this way about somebody and generally didn't know how to process these feelings. Sarah said she tried handling the situation diplomatically, but Williams made three attempts to kiss her. By the third attempt, I was more aggressive. I pushed him off and said he's crossing boundaries. But she said this triggered Williams to question her sexuality and asked if she was gay. Huh? <laughs> this guy is a fucking knobhead. It's like the most what? It's like when guys like if a woman turns her down, like oh yeah, you're not hot anyway. I didn't really like you. It's like what? Like you'll get like huh? It was getting weird. I realized this guy who I don't know at all could be capable of anything. So I did my best to remain calm and not let him feel like he's attacking me. You see, this is a sad thing about being a woman, isn't it? Look at the things you have to think about in those situations. You have to think of the aggressor. You have to think about how to defuse the situation just to get out of it safely because you don't want to trigger them into doing something fatal when in actuality you should be kicking them in the nuts and running running a mile but you don't want to do that because you might trigger something <sighs> fuck man sarah decided to leave but she said williams insisted on driving her back to her hotel i told him while he was driving me back that i had forgotten my glasses he didn't even respond he literally swerved you turned and raced back to his studio the ride back to her hotel she said was the worst ride of her life according to sarah when williams called her the following day she asked if he was upset with her despite her rejection of his advances i thought he's on the spectrum and maybe i could give him a chance i was kind of doubting myself wondering if maybe i did lead him on williams went on tour and they continued to speak regularly so again these women again another account of knowing from minute one that this guy was a freak this guy was a weirdo this guy was a fucking pest this guy was a diddler they knew it they knew it 
they should have just trusted their intuition they all knew it he didn't there's not like somebody coming under the guise of like no nah, he he was giving off weirdo vibes from the very beginning they should have just trusted intuition in it they should just went okay cool even though this guy's got clout he's got fame fuck him because you really never know how people are until you actually meet them in real life to be completely honest and this is a good example of it Sarah, she, Sarah said she agreed to meet Williams in her hometown, but ahead of this, she said that she started to give him real asshole vibes by constantly calling her while she spent time with her family. He began questioning why she wasn't answering her phone. He started becoming extremely demanding. I met him once. I thought, this is weird. Sarah said she reluctantly agreed to pick Williams up from the airport. I, honestly, man, how can you go from, how can you go from somebody blow? How can you go from knowing that somebody's being a weirdo? You draw the boundaries. Not interested. I'm with my family. Leave me alone. They keep calling you and then you still have the decency and the honestly man just these nice people get it's always lovely people that get taken advantage of isn't it she reluctantly agreed to pick williams up at the airport at 6 a.m she was expecting him to drop him off at a hotel and meet him later but he insisted that she stay and accompany him to his room she said the conversation felt really unnatural and forced they both got into the elevator and that's when sarah said williams tried to kiss her she he, he literally grabbed my face and kissed me i was like oh my god and backed away as the elevator doors opened sarah said williams didn't look at her he simply walked ahead of his hotel room while she walked behind him confused about what had just happened she said williams didn't like the room upon arrival so he requested to change it they followed the porter to a new room once the porter was gone she said williams tried to kiss her again i told him i didn't want to do this but he still forced himself on me she said williams continued tried to kiss her and she reluctantly she reluctantly let him he, he is then alleged to have moved her to the bed i could tell you telling you i don't want to do this i was like you can't why can't you accept that i'm uncomfortable but he said he, no Let, let's read that again he is then alleged to have moved her to the bed i continue to tell him i don't want to do this i was like why can't you accept that i'm uncomfortable but she said he coerced her into lying next to him and continued to try and put his hands down her pants he forced his hand and said to him i told him I told you, I don't want to have sex with you. Eventually, I let him do it because he basically went over me. <sighs> Fucking hell. So sad. I was saying, okay, please, let's not do this. I don't want to be aggressive. He kept doing it and I was pushing him off. I didn't want to be pushed off. He didn't want to be pushed off. He's a big, strong guy. I was like, dude, I can't breathe. You're on top of me. He grabbed my face and was going at it i didn't want to go into it much more oh jesus christ so what like he covered her face or something yo this is wild i'm not gonna lie this is fucking wild holy shit holy shit this guy should be in fucking prison this guy should be in literal prison after the alleged assault, Sarah said she left the room when Williams fell asleep but forgot to take her bag with her. When she returned to collect her bag, she said Williams was vomiting. So she called... Again, women, man. Look how fucking caring and nurturing these women are. Look how caring and nurturing women are. Thinking of their feelings. Trying to skirt around and kind of baby their fucking violent, abhorrent behavior. After the fucking alleged rape still going back to the room and helping them. like what the honestly it's always honest it's always the nicest people that get taken advantage of isn't it oh my head yeah anyway um that's why being an arsehole is probably the best thing possible if you're a woman being an arsehole off rip unless you're interested in the person is probably the best thing to do don't give anybody an inch but when you're not interested just be an arsehole straight off be a be be happy to be called a bitch from minute one. Boop boop boop. Block 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 like that meme. Block it block it block it block it. Block it. That, that woman right? I forgot what what channel you right? Like because if not, if you give anybody, especially these kind of guys, if you give them a fucking inch, they will try and take a fucking mile. Um, Williams was asleep again. She let him in the room. Um, and pe sorry. Um, she then returned to collect her bag. Williams was vomiting. She called the hotel medics. Williams fell asleep again, so she left the room to pace down a corridor in a bit to try to understand what just happening she decided to needed to go she needed to go home she returned to her room to again to pick up a bag but he was awake and started begging her not to leave she agreed to stay but out of nowhere this guy tries to have sex with me again on this occasion sarah said williams was more aggressive and forceful but i just let it happen i was like just let this happen quick then then get the fuck out 
Recording the scene, Sarah said she remembered him opening her thighs. I would close them and he'd tell me how to relax. <sighs> That's words of a fucking rapist, isn't it? Let's just call it let's just call us let's just call it spade a spade. Anytime you have to tell somebody to relax, that's words of a fucking rapist. I don't think I've ever uttered the word somebody. Just relax. What? Relax. I'm uptight because I don't want to do this. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're scaring me. Please back off. She said Williams fell asleep again and he immediately she let me left the room with all her things, rushed downstairs and waited for her car. I wanted to vomit. I was so disgusted. That's when I had a breakdown. I was just crying. That's when it hit me that I had no idea who this guy was or what he was capable of. I was really scared. She added, this is bigger This is bigger than me. I was very reserved. I don't like calling people out and I don't want people to look at me like, oh my God, you see what I mean? I said before in the beginning, most guys get grace from, most guys don't know. That's why I think, that's why I think that in general, this whole, there's this whole rhetoric online that there's way more like false rape allegations than, than legit ones. And I don't think that's true. I just think, unfortunately, we live in a society where like, there are these like, these blanket phrases get thrown about that are really insulting to our intelligence like believe all women it's just an insulting thing to say because you have to take every case by case right you can't just believe everybody just because they say something it's just that's that doesn't make sense logically in our brains but to say that there's more fake rake allegations than legit ones is obviously incorrect we know that to be not true. Like we even know from our own anecdotal evidence or people we've known, people we've heard about in our own social group that more than likely there's way more um, instances of sexual assault that don't even get uh, um, reported because the women are literally giving the guys grace because they know what allegation can do to a guy. So because they don't remember it properly, because they're so traumatized by the situation and because they don't want to, you know, put the, the person, get, get the guy in trouble or have themselves be looked at as a victim because they don't want to be looked seen as weak or be seen as vulnerable. They just let it go. That doesn't mean it didn't happen. It did happen. It's just that you got quote unquote lucky because that person didn't want to bury you because they also didn't want to damage their, which is dumb anyway, because you're not damaging your reputation. You're not, it's not a bad thing to be a victim. Something was done to you by force that was completely out of order, completely out of line. And if anything, you should be trying to get whatever revenge and whatever justice that you can on a person by ruining their, their reputation, their person, you know, whatever their livelihood, everything, if you can. But I understand why they don't because of the, you know, especially in England, like the, there's loads of rules around what, like the time frame you have to report it, um, the evidence that's needed to basically convict somebody. The conviction rate is super low. I think in like the single digit percentile, like it's fucking crazy. So I can understand why people don't want to report these type of things, but it doesn't mean they're not happening, especially in dance music scene, especially in nightlife where the lines are already blurred, you know, dark dance floor, people under people under the influence and shit. But this sort of stuff is really is worse in my opinion because this is stuff that's been done in daytime, you know. And and it's not you know it's not to excuse one or the one or the other. But when the lines are blurred, you could kind of see why things went that direction, right? And the kind of ramping up of the fucking situation. But in this type of situation where you're amongst friends and stuff, like this is probably way more confusing for the victim because you, you just can't make sense of it. Like, hold on, I was with my friend just a second ago. I got introduced to this person who's a celebrity via a good friend of mine who I trust and who I love. And I got, you know what I mean? You just can't process it because you're like, hold on, my friend knows. You know what I mean? Like you just, that's probably the thing that fucks with their brain the most because it's done through a friendship way. <sighs> Anyway, this is bigger than me. I'm very reserved. I don't like calling people out and I don't want people to look at me like a victim, but I need to speak about this because it's, it's for everyone else that's been through this and to keep anyone else from going through this ever. Ra spoke to friends of Sarah who supported her throughout the aftermath. Of this. Ra has seen the statements corroborating this account um, with reporting by Annabelle Ross. So big up Annabelle Ross. She's always doing amazing stuff in terms of calling out some of this horrible stuff that's happening in dance music. You've got their support for sexual assault survivors down there below if you want to check it out on the article itself. I'll put the link to the article there written down below in the description so you can check it out. Um, this by a writer called Anu Sukau. Um, so I'll definitely press uh, put that in the description. So if you want to read it yourself, you can. Um, I guess the only lesson to be learned from this tour thing is that you should always trust your intuition always no matter how big the celebrity is no matter who the person is whatever your first instinct is even if you get it wrong you're better off trusting your intuition especially as a woman because you have no recourse later on if you do try to give them a chance because especially if it's a dude and they're bigger than you 
what can you do to defend yourself really you know what i mean when you get to that position there's really nothing you can do and you're kind of you kind of leaving yourself open to getting you know attacked abused or whatever it may be which is obviously terrifying so in this instance i think women in general should just always go with their gut instinct if somebody's giving you the ick if somebody's giving you alarm bells red flags whatever the fucking term is run a fucking mile never ever give them an inch never give them an inch and this kind of makes me think about the juliana huxable interaction and kind of makes me understand now why i got that frosty reaction maybe as a rule it's like look anytime a straight presenting guy comes up to me instant fuck off if i'm not interested instant fuck off because i don't know what your intentions are but i'm not going to give you a fucking chance you know maybe that's a maybe that's a rule that most people within dance music especially the women even if you're not a dj if you're just kind of a, a proponent a fan of it that's what you should kind of go with anytime somebody comes up to you and you don't know them especially if they're a straight presenting guy a heteronormative dude instant fucking block instant lockdown instant lockdown and if you later find out oh no that's an amazing guy they're so nice okay cool i didn't know whatever l whatever it is what it is but you got enough friends anyway you don't need any more fuck it you know because when you give people a chance, look what fucking happens. Loads of them. Every single account here, every single person in this account has said the same thing. I saw him first, um, didn't like him. The Kylie person, the Jenna person, the Sara person, they all had exactly the same visceral reaction to this guy when they first met him. Oh, this guy's a piece of shit. Not for me, not for me, not for me. But they gave him a chance to look what ended up happening. Again, force of feelings to everybody um, affected by this. I'm interested to see how the community or the scene overall reacts, especially with this guy being on Rhythm Section, which is I think it's on Rhythm Section, right? Which is a pretty big label here in in, in England, especially in the South. Um, they kind of run that place over there and do a lot of good parties and put out a lot of good releases and shit. He's obviously very popular, even though I don't really know the guy too tough. I don't really listen to his music. People clearly like him and like what he does. So it'll be interesting to see how the scene overall reacts to it because the reason why these guys kind of get away with this sort of shit is because inadvertently this one guy pays for a lot of people's private schools he put he pays for a lot of people's mortgages he pays for a lot of people's fucking finance on their cars a lot of people are invested in making sure that kamal williams's music career is blossoming because it allows them to also have a rich and fulfilling life so they kind of turn a blind eye or look the other way because it's more advantageous to them but with these accounts and you'd imagine more accounts are probably going to come out as well because you know this is what happens usually when someone first comes out and kind of you know is brave enough to kind of speak out usually other people also come out and say you know what this also happened to me um if that is the case then we're definitely going to see something shit happen but um number one to be fair what's the what's with the name kamal williams anyway this guy looks like he's like mixed with white and and asian but then he has a name that like he sounds like he's some black dude from like detroit or something what's that all about maybe that's what that maybe that should have been a red flag this guy's called kamal williams but his real name's henry Wu. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> what? He's he's already he, he was being devious from minute one, you know? But anyway, uh, absolutely horrendous report. Haters fucking see it, this type of thing. But again, another instance of like always trust your gut instincts as a woman out there on the scene. Always fucking trust your gut instincts because these guys out here are out here doing an absolute madness. You really can't trust anybody out there. You really cannot trust anybody. I swear to God you can't. I swear to God you cannot.